Bill Ricker Public Library's January session of Let's Talk Books. We had a great meeting in January and discussed quite a few books that I'm going to talk about in this video. I hope you will enjoy some of the selection that our readers have been reading and that you find something that you can pick up and snuggle up to on a cold winter night. Our first book is Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ning. In Shaker Heights, a placid progressive suburb of Cleveland, everything is fine from the layout of the winding roads to the colors of the houses to the successful lives its residents will go on to lead. And no one embodies the spirit more than Elena Richardson, whose guiding principle is playing by the rules. Enter Mia Warren. An artist and single mother who arrives in this idyllic bubble with her teenage daughter, Pearl, and rents the house from the Richardsons. Soon, Mia and Pearl become more than tenants. All four Richardson children are drawn to the mother and daughter pair. But Mia carries with her a mysterious past and a disregard for the status quo that threatens to upend this carefully audited community. When old family friends of the Richardsons attempt to adopt a Chinese-American baby, a custody battle erupts that dramatically divides the town and puts Mia and Elena on opposing sides. Suspicious of Mia and her motives, Elena is determined to uncover the secrets in Mia's past, but her obsession will come at an unexpected and devastating cost. Mama Luke's by Jerry Purnell. Rick Galloway still not sure what inspired him to volunteer to fight Cubans in Angolia, and he certainly never expected to end his African adventure Shanghai by a flying saucer when his CIA superiors cut him and his men adrift as the Cubans overran their final position. He didn't expect to end up on the planet Tran. God only knew how many light years from Earth raising drugs for an alien cartel under the auspices more or less of a Galaxy civilization administered and run by slave class of humans for their alien masters either. But he did. And since then, he survived mutinies, civil wars, battles against the Byzantine, Romans, medieval knights, Mongol raids on the world where climate change is races unchecked through a 600 year cycle. Along the way, he's found love, lost it, found it again, and became a great noble all the while knowing his alien employees will probably nuke his people back into the Stone Age when they're done. He's managed his impossible balancing act for 13 years. He lost people he cared about, been forced to do things he hated, and tried along the way to make life better for people trapped on Tran with them. And he's tired, so tired. But now everything has changed again. New starmen have arrived on Tran, with dangerous gifts and style weapons of their own. Everything Rick Galloway thought he knew about his mission on Tran is about to be turned on its head, and everyone expects him to fix it. The Eyes of the Queen by Oliver Clements. After centuries locked in an endless cycle of poverty, persecution, and barbarity, Europe has finally emerged into the Age of Enlightenment. Scientists, philosophers, scholars, and poets alike believe this to be the new era of reason and hope for all. But the forces of darkness haven't completely dissipated as Spain hunts and butchers any who dare divide its ironclad Catholic Church. Only one nation can fight the black shadow that threatens this new age, and that is Britain, now ruled by the brilliant young Queen Elizabeth I. But although she may be brave and headstrong, Elizabeth knows she cannot win this war simply by a force of arms. After her armies have been slashed in half, her treasury is on its knees, Elizabeth needs a new kind of weapon forged to fight a new kind of war, in which stealth, secrecy, not bloodshed are the means. In this tense situation, Her Majesty's Secret Service is born, with the charismatic John D. as its head, a scholar, a soldier, and an alchemist. D. is the loyal only to the truth and to his queen. And for her, the woman he's forbidden from loving, he is prepared to risk his life. The Cipher by Isabella Maladonna. FBI Special Agent Nina Guerrera escaped a serial killer's trap at 16. Years later, when she's jumped in a Virginia park, a video of the attack goes viral. 
Legions of new fans are not the only ones impressed with her fighting skills. The man who abducted her 11 years ago is watching. Determined to reclaim his lost prize, he commits a grisly murder designed to pull her into the investigation. But his games are just beginning, and he's using the internet to invite the public to play along. His coded riddles may have made him a deprived so social media superstar, a cyber ghost dubbed the Cyber. But to Nina, he's a monster who preys on the vulnerable. Partnered with FBI's preeminent mind hunter, Dr. Jeffrey Wade, who is haunted by his own past, Nina tracks the predator across the country. Clue by clue, victim by victim, Nina races to stop a deadly killer while the world watches. A Time for Mercy by John Grisham, Clayton, Mississippi, 1990. Jake Briggins finds himself embroiled in a deeply diverse of trial when the court appoints him attorney for Drew Gamble, a timid 16-year-old boy accused of murdering a local deputy. Many in Clinton want a swift trial and a death penalty. But Jake digs in and discovers that there's more to the story that meets the eye. Jake's fierce commitment to saving Drew from the grass chamber puts his career, his financial security, and the safety of his family on the line. The Gauguin Connection by Estelle Ryan. It's up to a brilliant autistic investigator to keep a ruthless killer from striking again. World-renowned expert in nonverbal communication, Dr. Geneva Lennon investigates insurance claims, not murder. So when her boss asks her to help his friend look into the death of a young artist, her autistic mind rebels against the change. A straightforward murder investigation quickly turns in to a quagmire of stolen Eurocorps weapons, a money laundering charity forged out and high ranking EU officials abusing their power. As if this isn't enough, she reluctantly teams up with an international thief whose knowledge of the art world proves invaluable. Forced out of her predictable routine, safe environment, and limited social interaction, Genevieve is thrown into being part of a team in a race to stop a ruthless killer from targeting more. Artist. The Law of Innocence by Michael Conley. On the night he celebrates a big win, defense attorney Mickey Haller is pulled over by police, who find a body of a former client in the trunk of his Lincoln. Haller is immediately charged with murder, but can't post the exorbitant $5 million bail slapped on him by a vindictive judge. Mickey elects to present himself and is forced to mount his defense from his jail cell in the Twin Tower Correctional Center in downtown Los Angeles, all the while he needs to look over his shoulder. As an officer of the court, he is an instant target and he makes few friends when he reveals corruption plot within the jail. But the bigger plot is one against him. Helen knows he's been framed, whether by a new enemy or an old one. As his trusted team, including his half-brother Harry, investigates, Helen must use all of his skills in the courtroom to counter the damning evidence against him. Even if he can obtain a not guilty verdict, Mickey understands that won't be enough. In honor to be truly exonerated, he must find out who really committed the murder and why. That is the law of innocence. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osmond. In a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet weekly in the jigsaw room to discuss unsolved crimes. Together, they call themselves the Thursday Murder Club. When a local developer is found dead with a mysterious photograph left next to the body, the Thursday Murder Club suddenly finds themselves in the middle of their first live case. As the bodies begin to pile up, can our unorthodox but brilliant gang catch the killer before... It's too late. Some Choose Darkness by Charlie Donnelly. In the summer of 1979, five Chicago women went missing. The predator, nicknamed the thief, left no bodies or clues behind until police received a package from a mysterious woman named Angela Mitchell, whose unorthodox investigations appeared to unmask the killer. Then Angela disappeared without a trace. Forty years later, the thief is about to be paroled for Angela's murder. But the cryptic file Rory finds in her father's law office suggests there is more to the case. Making one startling discovery after another, Rory becomes helplessly entangled in the life of Angela Mitchell and what happened to her. As she continues to dig, even Rory can't be prepared for the full, terrifying truth that is emerging. 
Suicide House by Charlie Donnelly. Inside the walls of Indiana's elite Westmont Preparatory High School, expectations run high and rules are strictly enforced. But in the woods beyond the manicured campus and the playing field sits an abandoned boarding house that is infamous among the students as a late night hangout. Here, only one rule applies. Don't let your candle go out unless you want the mirror, the man in the mirror to find you. One year ago, two students were killed there in a grisly slaughter. The case has since become the focus of a hit podcast, The Suicide House. Though a teacher was convicted of the murders, mystery and questions remain. The most urgent among them is why so many students who survived the horrific night have returned to the boarding house to kill themselves. Rory, an expert in reconstructing cold cases, is working on the Suicide House podcast with Lane, recreating the night of the killings in order to find answers that have eluded the school, the town, and the police. But more that they learn about the troubled stu students, the chilling, static culprit, and the dangerous game gone tragically wrong, the more convinced they become that something sinister is still happening. Inside Westmont Prep, the game hasn't ended. It thrives on secrecy and silence. For its players, there may be no way to win or to survive. Killers of the Flower Moon by David Grant. In the 1920s, the richest people per capita in the world were members of the Osage Nation in Oklahoma. After oil was discovered beneath their land, the Osage rode in chauffeured automobiles, built mansions, and sent their children to study in Europe. Then, one by one, the Osage began to be killed off. The family of the Osage woman, Molly Burkott, became a prime target. One of her relatives was shot, another was poisoned, and it was just the beginning, as more and more were dying under the mysterious circumstances, and many of those who dared to investigate the killings were themselves murdered. As the death toll rose, the newly created FBI took up the case, and young director J. Edgar Hoover turned to former Texas Ranger named Tom White to try to unravel the mystery. White put together an undercover team, including a Native American agent who infiltrated the region and together with the Osage began to expose one of the most chilling conspiracies in American history. Humans by Brandon Stanton. Traveling to more than 40 countries, he conducted interviews across continents, borders, and language barriers. Human is the definitive catalog of these travels. The faces and locations will vary from page to page, but the stories will feel deeply familiar. Told with candor and intimacy, humans will re resonate with readers across the globe, providing a portrait of our shared experiences. Educated by Tara Westover, born to survivalists in the mountains of Idaho, Tara Westover was 17 the first time she set foot in a classroom. Her family was so isolated from the mainstream society that there was no one to ensure the children received an education and no one to intervene when one of Tara's older brothers became violent. When another brother got himself into college, Tara decided to try a new kind of life. Her quest for knowledge transformed her, taking her over oceans and across continents to Harvard and to Cambridge University. Only then would she wonder if she traveled too far, if there was still a way home. Notes on a Silencing by Lacey Crawford. When Notes on Silencing hit bookstores in the summer of 2020, even amidst a global pandemic, it sent shockwaves through the country. Not only did this intimate investigative memoir usher in a medium storm of coverage, but it also prompted the elite St. Paul School to issue a formal apology to the author, Lacey Crawford, for its handling of her report of sexual assault by two fellow students nearly 30 years ago. In this searing book, Crawford tells the story of coming forward during the state investigation of the elite New England prep school decades after her assault, only to find for the first time evidence that corroborated her memories. Here were depictions of a hardworking girl she'd been, as well as astonishing proof of an institutional silencing. The slander, the innuendo, and the lack of adult concern that Crawford had experienced as a student hadn't been imagined. They were the actions of a school that prized its reputation above everything, even a child. Code Breakers by David Kahn. 
Man has created codes to keep secrets and has broken codes to learn those secrets since the time of the pharaohs. For 4,000 years, fierce battles have been waged between code makers and code breakers. And the story of these battles is civilization's secret history. The hidden account of how wars were won and lost, diplomatic intrigues spoiled, business secrets stolen, governments ruined, computers hacked, from the XYZ affair to the Dreyfus affair, from the Gaelic War to the Persian Gulf, from Druid runes to the Kabbalah to outer space, from the Zimmerman telegram to Agnia to the Manhattan Project. Code breaking has shaped the course of human events to an extent beyond any easy reckoning. Once a government monopoly, cryptology today touches everybody. It secures the internet, keeps email private, maintains the integrity of cash machine transactions, and scrambles TV signals on unpaid for channels. Saving Freedom, Truman, the Cold War, and the Fight for Western Civilization by Joe Scarborough. The year was 1947. The Soviet Union had moved from being America's uneasy ally in the Second World War to its most feared enemy. With Joseph Stalin's ambitions pushing westward, Turkey was pressured from the east while communist revolutionaries overran Greece. The British Empire was battered from its war with Hitler and suddenly teetering on the brink of financial Roman. Only America could afford to defend freedom in the West, and the effort was spearheaded by a president who hadn't even been elected to the office. But Truman would wage a domestic political battle that carried with it the highest of stakes, inspiring friends and foes alike to join in his crusade to defend democracy across the globe. A. Lincoln by Ronald C. White. Everyone wants to define the man who signed his name, A. Lincoln. In his lifetime and ever since, friend and foe have taken it upon themselves to characterize Lincoln according to their own label or libel. Through meticulous research for the newly completed Lincoln legal papers, as well as recently discovered letters and photographs, White provides a portrait of Lincoln's personal, political, and moral evolution. White shows us Lincoln as a man who would leave a trail of thoughts in his wake, jotting ideas on scraps of paper, following them in his top hat or the bottom drawer of his desk. A country lawyer who asked questions in order to figure out his own thinking on an issue, as much as to argue the case. Hands-on commander-in-chief who as soldiers and sailors watched in amazement commandeered a boat and audited an attack on the Confederate shore batteries at the tip of the Virginia Peninsula. A man who struggled with the immortality of slavery and as president acted publicly and privately to outlaw it forever. And finally, a president involved in a religious odyssey who wrote for his own eyes only a profound mediation on the will of God and the civil war that would become the basis of his first address. Jackie and Maria by Gil Paul. Jackie Kennedy was beautiful, sophisticated, and thinking about leaving her ambitious young senator husband. Life in the public eye with an overly ambitious and unfaithful, a man who could hardly be coaxed to return from a vacation after the birth of his stillborn child was breaking her spirit. So when she was offered a holiday on the luxurious yacht owned by billionaire Ari Onassis, she says yes to a meeting that will ultimately change her life. Maria Callas is the height of her operatic career and widely considered to be the finest soprano in the world. And then she's introduced to Aristotle Anassis, the world's richest man and her fellow Greek. Stuck in a childless and sexless marriage with pressures on all sides from the opera house managers and the hostile press, she finds her life being turned upside down by this hyper-intelligent and impeccable charming man. Little by little, Maria's and Jackie's lives begin to overlap and they come closer and closer until everything they know about the world changes on a dime. I hope that you enjoyed listening to all the books that we discussed at last month's Let's Talk Books book club. We hope that you will join us next month. We always meet on the last Wednesday of the month. We would love to see you on there. Check us out by going to BillRickerLibrary.org. Thank you.